Everyone, my name is Dave and welcome back to Diabetic Savvy. We are continuing our focus on those classic breakfast items that most of us love and grew up with. Today is no different. We're diving into biscuits and gravy. Our adaptation though is going to make it carb deliberate, virtually low sugar, and absolutely diabetic friendly. So hit subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we'll be back in a few seconds to adapt biscuits and gravy. See you in a few seconds. Classic biscuit. It's one of those quick bread items that I very rarely have any feedback or can remember even in my own case where the flavor has never been there, but it's always been about the texture for me. Were they light and flaky or tough and like a hockey puck? And a lot of the adaptations of the biscuit have, that are specifically keto friendly or low carb have a hard time preserving a lot of that textural integrity. I think we have a variation that still falls into that category being diabetic friendly and preserves all that classic texture that we love so much. That flaky, buttery, wonderful, delicate biscuits and gravy that just work perfectly with the good sausage gravy. So the ingredients of the classic biscuit are pretty simple. They are pastry flour, baking soda, salt, butter, buttermilk, so our version of the buttermilk biscuit is going to break apart the pastry flour. We're going to use two and two thirds cups or approximately 16 ounces of carbolose flour. Now this particular flour, as I've said in previous videos, is a whole wheat derivative that's very, very low in carbs, reacts just like flour, and is diabetic friendly. The next ingredient that we're going to be using is cake flour. This ingredient will help us preserve a lot of that light, flaky texture that we've all come to love with biscuits. Our next ingredient is going to be baking soda. Baking soda helps with our biscuits poof and become airy and light, so that's really important. Next is gonna be salt. Our next ingredient is four ounces of frozen diced butter. It's got to be frozen. We'll talk about why in just a few minutes. I'm gonna put this back in the freezer so it stays nice and frozen until we need it. Our last two ingredients are really simple. Two cups of classic buttermilk. Now you can use a whole buttermilk if you can find it. I just use a low-fat buttermilk. Our last item here is about three ounces of regular butter. We're gonna use this to finish and brush butter on top of our finished biscuits. All right, so like we've spoken before about quick breads, the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna to mix together all of our dry ingredients. So we'll start off with the carbolose flour. And again, that's 16 ounces or about two and two thirds cups. One cup or about approximately four ounces by weight of cake flour. And again, that's just used to maintain and keep a lot of that classic buttery biscuit texture that we like so much. Our baking soda. And then our salt. And we're going to mix all these together until they're properly combined. So now that we've mixed together all of our dry ingredients, we're now going to be doing the cut-in method. And this is where that frozen butter comes in that we put in the freezer earlier. Now for this method to work properly, you want to pre-dice up your butter and freeze it. The reason you want to do that is because the cut-in method basically uses the friction and the abrasiveness of the flour to cut away bits of the butter little by little without melting it so that you end up with what's basically a cornmeal-like consistency. And essentially what you've done is you've coated each and every individual granule of flour and dry ingredient with a little bit of the butter. And that's what helps preserve that flaky texture that we all love so much with traditional biscuits. So let's get going. So what we'll do now is we'll put all the frozen butter into the flour. And essentially what you want to do is you want to take your hands and you want to pinch it and rub the butter, the flour, up against the butter. Now, this will take a few minutes. All right, so now we've completed our cut-in method. There's a little bit of the butter still in there, but that will continue to work itself out as we, as we now incorporate all the wet ingredients. So now again, we'll start off with a well, pushing all that flour to the side, and pour in our milk. So 
So now that we've added the buttermilk to the flour, we're going to use what's called the fold-in method. And it's really simple. You have to imagine your bowl like a clock. So 12 o'clock would be away from you, 6 o'clock here, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. Putting your left hand at the 10 o'clock position and your right hand at the 3 o'clock position, you want to scoop under the flour and fold it towards you. And then you want to turn the bowl. All right, so the 10 o'clock and the 3 o'clock position, we scoop under the flour, we fold in, don't worry about mixing, turn the bowl about a quarter turn and do it again. And you just repeat that process until the buttermilk and the flour begin to incorporate. And this will come together really quickly. Don't worry about scraping your fingers just yet. And the idea for doing it this way is that you don't toughen up the biscuits. And this is already coming together. And as you can see, I have a spatula nearby. This is what I will use to scrape all of the dough off of my hands in just a second. So, once we're now at this stage where everything is kind of feathery and crumbly and there's almost no dry flour left, that's when you want to scrape your hands. And once you get the majority of your biscuit mix off of your hands, if there's any major left, you just want to scrape all that off your hands. And now we can turn our biscuit dough out onto the counter with a little bit of flour and actually make biscuits. All right, welcome back. So we've got a little bit of all-purpose flour here just in a bowl. And I brought that out just because I want to make sure I keep as much of this flour or this uh, biscuit dough off of my hands as possible. And we're just going to put a little bit on the counter and I'm going to roll out this biscuit dough onto the countertop. Now this is where a lot of people will start to overwork the dough to the point of where you get really tough biscuits. Either by rolling it out with a rolling pin or just simply overworking the dough. And I would tell you that if the, if the dough comes together like it is right now, holding together, a little crumbly, I think you're perfectly fine. And then what you want to do is simply, with adding as little additional flour as possible, slowly press out the dough to the thickness that you want. They are going to rise in the oven, so when we think about how thick you want them, typically somewhere between a half and three quarters of an inch is about right. I'd say that's pretty good. We know which one that is. I'm going to move these up. And there we go. And we now have nine biscuits. I'm going to melt that remaining butter that we talked about, brush these, and put them in a 425 degree oven for anywhere between 16 and 20, 21 minutes or so. And while those are baking, we'll get going on the sausage gravy. All right, everyone, so while our biscuits are baking in the oven, we're gonna start on that classic gravy. And it's a really simple gravy. Uh, first thing we need to do, obviously, because it's sausage gravy, is cook the sausage. And this is just regular store-bought breakfast sausage. And we're going to... All right, another couple minutes have gone by. The sausages are almost done. I put a little bit more water in there and lowered the heat to medium-low. 
just to let those continue to cook. And I'm not really gonna mess with them too much more. We'll chop those up once they're done, but in the meantime, let's get going on the sausage gravy itself. So another pan. And we're gonna put that on about a medium high, medium, medium high or so. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna make what's called the roux. It's basically equal parts butter and, and flour. That's gonna be our thickening agent. So I've got a little bit of liquid butter in the pan, a little bit of flour, and I wanna mix that first. And you wanna make sure you get all of the flour completely moistened so there's no raw flour in the pan. And we're gonna let some of that starchiness cook out a little bit. And we have here some 2% regular milk, not buttermilk. I mean, you certainly can use buttermilk if you want to. And again, we're letting that starchiness of that flour cook out a little bit. Okay. Our sausages are doing really well. We can pretty much leave those alone right now. Those are almost done. And as you can see, the roux is starting to bubble a little bit. That's where we know we're good. And you want to put in, this is about a cup and a half of the 2% milk. And then you want to stir to combine, and then you can season this. We're just going to use a little bit of black pepper and a little bit of salt. That's about a pinch, so probably about half teaspoon of salt, and I like using black pepper. This is one of the few times I like using black pepper in a white sauce because I want to see it. And this is about anywhere, this is probably about a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And we're just gonna continue to mix that in. Now the way that you can tell when your gravy is ready is if you take your spatula through the pan and it starts to hold that line a little bit. If you can look, you can see that it's coming together pretty quickly. We're almost there. But also, that the gravy sticks to the spatula. You can see, it sticks a little bit sticking. Gotta go a little bit longer to go. And we can turn that off now. All right, so I chopped our sausage, dropped it into the pan, and as you can see, while I was doing that, the sausage gravy really thickened up. And I'm gonna tell you, this is where you can play a lot, around with, a lot around with the recipe. I really like a lot of sausage in mine. So that was all six of those sausage links put into this gravy. Now, if your gravy gets a little too thick while you're waiting for the biscuits to be done, don't panic. Just add a little, about a tablespoon or so of milk at a time until you get the consistency that you want, mix it in. I'm gonna check on our biscuits. Those biscuits look awesome. All right, so it's really important right when they come out of the oven to grab that finishing butter that we saved from earlier and we give them a good brushing. That way, the butter will absorb into the biscuit and provide that last minute flavor. All right, everyone, we are really, really good to go. Biscuits are cooled and I'm gonna tell you one last thing that I absolutely love to do with biscuits and gravy. <clears throat> I like to fork split my biscuits. Just take a fork, push it into all sides of the biscuit. That way you create a lot of really good nooks and crannies. And that's what I'm talking about. Biscuits and gravy. All right, here's our sausage gravy. Dollop as much as you like on here. Again, low net carbs, virtually sugar free, absolutely diabetic friendly. We're gonna save that for later. All right, so now we're gonna dig in.
Mm. That biscuit texture comes through, that sausage gravy totally rounds it out. I urge all of you to try this recipe. As is tradition, I'm going to leave the full recipe at the end of the video, as well as what my blood sugar numbers look like as a result of eating this meal. So there you have it. Diabetic friendly biscuits and gravy. It really doesn't get much better than this. Try this recipe out. Leave a comment. Hit subscribe. Hit that notification bell. If you like what we're doing, we're building a great community of diabetic friendly recipes, food reviews, and there's a lot more to come from us. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.